This is amazing. Now I'm going to show you how you can deploy a highly scalable AI application. Imagine you have an AI application and it's increasing in the number of users and you want a reliable solution to handle all those users. So how can you create that? In this, we will be covering how to create a repository, how to create container registry, how to create a pipeline, how to create infrastructure, that is the Kubernetes cluster, then how you can create load balancer, monitoring and security for the AI application. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about how you can create or deploy a highly scalable AI application. Every application will have two aspects. One is the front end. So what is front end? That's the user interface, what you see. So when you create an AI application, you create a user interface. That is a front end. And behind the scenes, you got the code. That is called the back end. So in regards to an AI application or any application, end-to-end -end application, generally you will have a front end and a back end. So now we need to deploy this in a cloud. For example, it could be Azure, Google Cloud, or AWS. And also we need to be highly scalable. Recently, I migrated an application from Google Cloud to Azure, which is highly scalable. I want to share with you the learnings I learned and how you can deploy a highly scalable AI application in cloud. In this specific tutorial, we are going to focus on Azure Cloud. So the application which I migrated receives more than a million views a month. So that's why I need a scalable infrastructure. So generally, when you saw the front end and the back end, you store both of those in the repo. That is your code repository. So that's the only bit which consists of the actual application. Now, after testing the application, you need to build the application into containers. To do that automatically, we create pipelines. So whenever you update your code in the repo, the pipeline automatically get triggered. Then that creates the container image and it gets stored in the container registry. Then those containers got deployed to Kubernetes. So that is the one which orchestrates the deployment and scaling process. Then for this Kubernetes, you'll have a load balancer that balances the load and that's what the users will see. So as a user, when you visit the AI application, first you're going to go to the load balancer, then the load balancer divides the traffic to the Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to take you through step by step how I build this whole infrastructure, take you through the code which I used as a reference and the different packages I used. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. I will put all the information in the description below. So I published a blog article which contains all these information. So the list of applications which I used to build the infrastructure. First is Terraform. Next is Helm Chart. Third is Docker. Fourth Prometheus Let's Encrypt and much more. This is going to be an advanced tutorial. If you want me to focus on any specific area, do let me know in the comments below. So if you are completely new to this, you might get confused, but I will try to simplify this as much as possible. So the first step is to convert the code you have to container image. So what is container? It's same like you have toy boxes at your home. So one toy box will have cars, one toy box will have Lego. So each box contains different types of toys. By dividing that separately, it's easy for us to manage. In the same way, when we have different types of code, like front-end code, back-end code, it's always good to keep that in a box or a container. So that's why we need containers in simple terms. So when I migrated, the first step, what I did is to convert the code into container image. So GitHub is the place you can store your code. You also have other providers such as GitLab or Azure Repo. So whenever you save those code or whenever you make some changes, you need to automatically create that code and put that in a container so that the latest version is in a completely different container compared to the previous version. That's why we create different container images. So in order to automatically create those container images, we are using pipelines in Azure. You can also use GitHub Actions or GitLab Jenkins. So the first step is that I created repository in Azure. That is the first step. Then you create Azure Container Registry. 
that's what you see here. Third step is that you create the pipeline using Azure pipeline. Here, you're mentioning the repository that you want to use. As an example, I provide the GitHub repo, but if you're using Azure repo, you can modify the URL here. Here, you provide the YAML file for the Azure pipeline. So we are telling Azure pipeline, whenever there is a trigger from the master branch, just use this Ubuntu image, then you build and push. So using Docker file, you're building that Docker image and then you're pushing. That means you're saving that in the container registry, as you can see here. So now we have created a repo and saved all the code there. Then we created the container registry to save all the container images. Then we created the pipeline to automate the process of converting a code into container image. Now the next step is that we need Kubernetes cluster. That's where we are going to publish the application. So this is a, one of the best orchestrator. It can automatically create more containers when required. That is called scaling. So how can I build Kubernetes cluster? One option is that you directly go to Kubernetes service and using the user interface, you can create the Kubernetes cluster. But I use something different that is called Terraform. So as I've shown before, these are the main tools which I used. Terraform is the one which I used to create the Kubernetes cluster. So Terraform is just a code. So that is called infrastructure as a code. So here's an example. So the Terraform code looks like this. So here I'm mentioning I need a Azure Kubernetes cluster. I'm giving a name. I'm telling the number of nodes and then I can create node pools for this, which means this is scalable. This, will, this code will automatically create your virtual machine or computer in the cloud. Just you need to say Terraform plan and then Terraform apply. That's it. So each time rather than going to the user interface and manually clicking all those buttons, just by saying Terraform plan and Terraform apply, the Kubernetes cluster with the configuration provided will automatically get created. If you want to delete the cluster, again, you mentioned Terraform destroy to destroy the whole cluster. As simple as that. And now we have built the Kubernetes cluster. The next step is that we need to deploy the container images in this Kubernetes cluster. So how can we do that? To do that, I use something called Helm Package Manager. That's what I mentioned as Helm Chart, as you can see here. Example Helm Chart will look like this, which will have the location to the image stored. So in regards to Azure, it will look like this, azurecr.io, and you will have the image name and image tag. So this is the location of the container image which we created earlier. Here also, just by typing helm install and then the YAML file to install the helm chart. So that is that image. By doing this, the container image will automatically get deployed to Kubernetes cluster. Now we have successfully deployed our application in Kubernetes cluster. Now we need to monitor the same application. To do that, I'm going to install Prometheus. Installing Prometheus is also very easy. So just add the Prometheus repo, then Helm install Prometheus to install Prometheus. In this way, you are able to monitor your application. You can see the monitoring working in my Kubernetes cluster. Total number of pods, the deployments, replica sets, jobs, and cron jobs. This is currently running in live. So the pods are nothing but a set of containers. I'm not going to go into details for now. Next, we need load balancers. To do that, I again used Helm chart. I added the Helm ingress nginx repo. So by installing that using this command, now the load balancers will automatically get created. Next, I need to install let's encrypt. Using this, you are installing the SSL certificate. This is used for security. So even to do that, I use Helm install cert manager and then jet stack cert manager. So those are the full list of steps which I did. So in this, imagine there is more number of visitors coming, then this Kubernetes cluster will understand the overload and it can automatically create more number of virtual machines. And also it can replicate itself. By doing that, it is able to auto scale to higher numbers when the visitors are high, and then it can auto scale to lower numbers when the visitors are low. In this way, you are actually saving the cost. I just gave you a quick overview, but you got more details on this page. And also I've linked a few other resources at the bottom, such as 
setting up Nginx controller, Prometheus and Kubernetes, and also if you want to set up your CI CD pipeline in GitHub. This is just a high level overview. Do let me know in the comments below if you want me to focus on anything specific. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.